everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to be talking about your higher self specifically. What is your higher self? Um, How can you connect with it? And um, we're going to be talking to Maureen J. St. Germain and she's going to be talking about her book, Beyond the Flower of Life. So can you hold up your book too? Because I know you have it in your hands. Sure. Yeah. Yay. Okay, good. So congratulations about your book. Um, tell you. me a little bit about what um, inspired you to write this book. I know it's an up, it's an anniversary edition. Exactly. Um, so this book was originally written as a follow up to the uh, famous work called the Merkaba or the Flower of Life work. And I taught this body of knowledge all over the world. I've taught in twenty four countries, and. Um, <clears throat> There were always a lot of questions on how things work or what follows up. And so what I did was kept good journals and good notes. And after about, uh, I don't know, I was t- teaching for probably 12 years. And then it took another seven years to write the book. So I was, you know, I released the book at, at the end of that cycle after about 20 years of teaching. So it really contains a huge body of knowledge. And that was 11 years ago. And then um, Inner Traditions, my publisher, decided they wanted to re-release it because it was self-published before. And it was self-published with two printings, which mm. is very unusual. So it, we took a, we received a lot of um, support for this book. It was very popular. Mm. And the updates made me happy because then there were things that I wanted to you know, edit or update uh, to make life easier for people. And so um, it represents a huge body of knowledge for anyone who meditates, mm-hmm. anyone who's trying to grow their spiritual connection. And and the material is such that it's all practical. They call me the practical mystic because I raised a family, I worked in the corporate world while I was doing a lot of this work, and I always wanted to make sure that what I was doing would be useful to people who were taking classes from me. Mm. Okay, so um, I know nothing about Merkab Merkaba, including how to say it, um, the flower of life, the body of work. Can you tell me a little bit about what it is? Mm -hmm. The Merkaba is a physical shape that people use to um, uh, create this shape around their body. So this Mm. shape is familiar to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Is it a star, a a three-dimensional? A star tetrahedron. That's right. Okay. And um, I'll show a little one so it's a little easier to see. But the white one is so much easier to see because, you know, the black one maybe shows up against my white top. But you Mm -hmm. can see it's two Mm -hmm. tetrahedrons, Mm -hmm. and a tetrahedron looks like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Two tetrahedrons are nested midway between each other, Mm -hmm. and that's called a star tetrahedron. And when you turn it on with certain a certain formula for spinning it, then it becomes a living field, a Merkaba. Mm -hmm. And I call it the uniform of the five D self. So when we uh, that that material is so very important because it helps people. There's a lot of teachers out there who have explained how the um, planet has its own uh, Merkaba and the um, perhaps other uh, planets in our solar system have this shape. And it's an activation shape that allows the purest vibration for an individual to be expressed. So, you know, we've heard about kids who wear uniforms in school and how they're better behaved. So the Merkaba is like that in the sense that wearing it, turning it on around your body, literally elevates you in a way that you're able to be um, a more evolved version of yourself, even if you haven't earned it. Okay. <laughs> so you're like in a different plane of real. So, and, and just to clarify, mm-hmm. um, this this um, Merkaba shape, which is a uh, tex- tex- what's it called? It's called a, it's called a star. A star. Tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. A star tetrahedron. As, as this is around your body, I'm imagining that this is around my body. And then when exactly. I'm in this field, um, how is this connected to my higher self? Well, in the early years, we weren't allowed to turn it on without connecting with our higher self. So I decided to develop a technique to help people connect with their higher self because 
it's one thing to be told, you don't do this until you get permission from your higher self. And it's another thing to know what that means. So the higher self is a version of you that's plugged into source or God, and it's also plugged into you. So it's like the go-between or the transformer between you and, and, and source. Mm -hmm. So the higher self has all the knowledge. It cares. It has knowledge about what you care about in your 3D world, and it has the knowledge about your divine plan that you chose, and it also has knowledge about your connection to source. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when you connect with that, it's like having uh, a grandmother that knows everything mm. that you turn to for advice. Mm. The higher self is you, but at the same time, it's it's an aspect of you that knows more than you do. So it's a little bit like saying your nose knows more than your feet because your nose can smell. Mm -hmm but you use all of it together. Mm -hmm. So the higher self uh, capacity can be used to help you make decisions. It can help you um, choose uh, one thing over another for an outcome that you uh, don't even know you need. And there's so many wonderful stories about working with the higher self and how it can help you with your life and your experiences and you know what's next. I was in, um, I was, teaching a class in New York City. And in August, um, after the reservations had made, been made last March, I'd been asking higher self, should I come back? Yes. Uh, what dates? And I was given the time frame. And um, in August, when I was ready to buy the airline ticket, I was told to come home right after the workshop. And I was planning on staying a day, do some shopping, see some friends, and maybe go to a museum. And I was told, go straight home. Hmm. I wasn't even asking my higher self, but because the connection is so strong after you do the work, it will come in sometimes and, and tell you to take this action. And when I couldn't buy the airline ticket, I said, what am I to do? And that's when I was told, go straight home. Well, hmm. that was 2001. And I was in New York City on September 10th, but I wasn't there on the 11th when I was planning on flying home. Wow. That's incredible. So how um, how do you view the higher self to be different than your intuition? Because I've had a lot of people and they're like, you know what, I, my intuition told me to do. And mm -hmm. you described it as your higher self. What's the difference? The difference is the intuition can be um, your gut feelings. It can be an angel. It can be your grandma who's watching over you. Mm -hmm. But your higher self is you. So there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And every one of us is learning to become ascended masters we're all becoming more evolved humans and the higher self version is the version of us that we're integrating into that and so the the development of that connection early on actually makes it easier for us to be more evolved than we would have been otherwise mm -hmm. so all those other things are good and helpful but they can also be influenced because i could influence your intuition i could influence your pendulum and your angels and guides, they want you to have your higher self connection because they know you're supposed to evolve. We're all mm, I see. So it's like you can actually have training wheels and have all these other people help you, or you can just go directly to your own source. But until you develop, like, better to just go to your own source, which actually has your divine plan, all this other stuff versus angels or intuition or all these other kinds of factors that could mm -hmm. be coming in. And okay. all those factors are good. You know, we don't want to discount any of them, but you know, it's like you can get where you want to go in a car. Mm -hmm. Are you going to buy a Toyota or are you going to buy a Mercedes? Mm -hmm. Well, if money's no object. I'm buying a Mercedes. Right. Right. Okay. So, so I love that. So, um, what do you see as the barriers of connection to your higher self? Self-doubt. Mm. That's the number one barrier. Mm -hmm. People have pretty good intuition, and they may even be connecting with their higher self, but they don't know it because they don't have any way to check it. They don't have any way to trust it. Mm. And what I do is I give them a protocol that they must practice for six weeks. If they make the commitment to do the six weeks of practice, which is fun and easy, then they can just about guarantee that they're going to have 100% accuracy because what happens is the way we make decisions is always based on history. You know, if you own, um, you know, a, a certain kind of motor scooter and I'm asking you about it, you're going to tell me about your brand and what you like about it. I'm going to read on the internet. I'm going to read the, you know, the, the reviews of that particular product. And then I'm going to make a decision. But when 
you work with your higher self about unimportant stuff for six weeks, you begin to, your, your personality begins to recognize that A, you have a history that your higher self is always right. Mm -hmm. And B, you're familiar. So you recognize that signal or symbol. Mm. And uh, finally, the ego gets to see how well things turn out when the higher self is consulted. Ah, uh, okay, got it. So it's, it's like a trial. It, you try it out, and then it goes. Ah, wait a second. This is far better, and I'm just rational, so I'll go for the far better process and making yes, decisions. Yes, and I like to encourage people to do the rational work. You know, during the during the practice period, it's very similar to the word you use. Um, you're not allowed to ask important stuff. You're not allowed to ask uh, anything but yes no questions. And you always have to follow through. Those are the three rules. And you don't use any other form of divination. You don't use your pendulum or your cards or any of that jazz. You just stick with this protocol. And by asking unimportant, insignificant questions, that's how you develop the history and the familiarity. Mm. And what happens then is you have that as a resource. Then what happens is when you're making a decision, you do all your, you know, you're going to buy a car. So you test drive the cars, you read the reports, all that that you would do. And then you ask your higher self. Got it. Do all the rational thinking and then involve this higher self. Right. Okay. Because your higher self is counterintuitive. And that counterintuitive is going to throw you off unless you have a history of knowing that your higher self is always right. And then you will follow it. Got it. I have a quick question to go back to the flower of life. And you said that the star um, tech, Tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to write it down. Tetrahedron. Hedron. Uh, hedron. Sorry. Hedron. Hedron. Yes. Uh -huh. um, you said it doesn't, it used to not turn off unless you connect it to your higher self. Can you tell me what that meant? Like you said, okay, and now you so have a process. Explaining is we were told not to turn it on. Turn on the, the tetrahedron. In other words, this shape has a, it's a system like a car. Okay. Mm. And so when we, uh, turn it on or activate it, we set in motion a whole bunch of fields that are moving, kind of like a car has a drivetrain, it has a fan belt, it has a motor, it has all those components. So this has many components, even though we only visualize this, there's all these components to it. And those components kind of come together and cause this energetic shift that some people can see, some people can sense. But what happens is when you, when you have an activated Merkaba, Everything is a lot smoother because your vibe is so much higher that you're able to see and understand things that you didn't see or understand before. And you also influence energetically those around you because the field is pretty big. I see. But you said before you weren't able to turn it on. Now you've, it sounds like you've developed a process to turn this okay. on. <clears throat> what, what, what I want to explain is this field was so powerful that when it was first brought forward... As a teaching, the students were not permitted to turn it uh, on until they had permission from their higher self. Uh, okay, so that's the setup. Where do I get permission? How do I get permission? How do I know it's my higher self? There was no protocol for that. So that's what I developed. And we found, we, meaning, you know, my students, found that we could use it for anything. Okay. You know, asking... Uh, instead of asking, is it going to rain today? Because that's not about my actions. I might ask, am I to carry an umbrella? And one day I was told, carry an umbrella. So then I'm looking at my umbrella stand in New York, you know, and I have the compact one and the, the, the cane one. And my higher self said, take the cane one. And so that's what I took. I never opened the umbrella, but I did a trip. And I didn't fall because I was holding that cane. <laughs> Love it. All right. I love it. So in the next section, we're going to actually experience um, some meditation. And uh, um, is it a connection? What? Tell me about what we're going to experience in the next it's section. A, it's a short meditation that will help you get started on this protocol. And then we can review the protocol again. Okay, excellent. All right. So we've been talking to um, Maureen J. St. Germain about her book, um, Beyond the Flower of Life. And in the next section, we're going to be experiencing something. We're going to be experiencing what she's been talking about. Thank you so much.